The Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, selected a group of the most healthy, educated Israelite men to study the Babylonian language and culture for three years, then put them to work in his royal court. In this group, there were three men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They served the king faithfully, and the king placed them in powerful positions. Nebuchadnezzar wanted his people to worship him, so he built a 90-foot-tall gold statue of himself and commanded everyone in Babylon to worship it. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had committed themselves to only worshiping God. So when everyone else in Babylon bowed and worshipped to the statue, the three men stayed standing. Nebuchadnezzar was furious and sentenced them to be thrown into a fiery furnace and burned alive. The king ordered the furnace to be turned up to seven times hotter than usual, so hot that even the guards who threw them into it were killed. Once the three men were inside, the king jumped up and asked his advisor, weren't there three men we threw in? I now see four men, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. The king ordered the men to come out. When they did, everyone was amazed. Not only were they still alive, but they were in perfect condition. Not a hair on their heads had been burned. Once again, the king was impressed, and not only let the men go, but promoted them. Years later, a new king of Babylon, named Darius came on the scene. A friend of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, named Daniel, who was also an Israelite, was so well liked by the new king that the other leaders in Babylon became jealous and hatched a plot to get rid of him. They tricked King Darius into signing a law that said Darius himself was a god and should be the only god anyone should worship for the next 30 days. Daniel heard about the law, but chose not to follow it. He went into an upstairs room in his home and looked out the windows facing toward Jerusalem, and he prayed to God three times a day. When the Babylonian leaders saw Daniel praying, they told King Darius, who was now forced to punish Daniel. He was arrested and thrown into a den full of lions overnight. In the morning, the den was opened, and Daniel was not only alive, there was not a scratch on him. Years later, after the Israelites had all been living in exile for 70 years, the Babylonians were overtaken by Persia, and the Israelites were allowed to return back to Jerusalem. They were going home. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, there are a lot of lions that can come up in our lives each day. Things that can work to pull us away from you. But Lord, you are stronger than any lion, any trap, any deception that Satan may throw our direction. Lord, help us to trust in you when it seems like there is no other answer and we can't find our own way out. Lead and guide us as your spirit provides for us in your steps to realize that you are the king of all. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers, sisters in Christ, Daniel and the lion's den. It's one of those stories my guess is that many of you probably first heard about when you were children in Sunday school. Now, this man certainly knew what fear was all about. He faced fear head on. Being thrown into a den of starving lions with no way to defend himself. The sharp teeth, claws just waiting for him. Now, what's interesting is that Bible pictures, for the most part, show Daniel being a young man when he was thrown in. But the reality was that he was about 80 years old when this happened. I'd look a long time to even find a picture that showed him as an older man. Now, 80 years old, that's really not the time in life that you really want to be facing a den of hungry lions unless the Lord is with you. For you see, ever since Daniel had been a teenager, Daniel stood up for what he believed in. Everyone in his country knew exactly where Daniel stood with God. But there were some men in the country who were jealous. 
and wanted to find a way to have him put to death. It was all because Daniel stood up for his faith that meant everything to him. Daniel was willing to leave his life in the hands of God, who he trusted would deliver him. That took courage. Absolutely amazing courage. And God came through. The next morning, when an anguished king came calling for his trusted advisor, Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. The Lord protected Daniel from getting so much as a scratch. Daniel faithfully stood up against all the lions because he knew that someone stronger was still very much in control of these kings of the jungle. He was safe in the arms of the Lord. Now, the story of Daniel and the lion's den, it's probably the best-known story from the book of Daniel and from chapter 18 of the story as we've been working our way through the Old Testament. But these were not the only lions that Daniel and several others had to face in the book of Daniel. First, they would drug against their will and be slaves in a foreign land. They refused to eat foods that were sacrificed to idols. Being forced to interpret the absolutely bizarre dreams of a foreign king who could have taken their head off with no warning. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being forced into a fiery furnace because they dared to stand up for their faith. How would they have courage to do something like this? They realized that God is in control. And they turned their lives and, in fact, their entire future over to Him. How true the words of Jesus after that were for them and for all of us as children of God today when we have to face our own set of lions. Jesus said, don't worry about what to say or how you will say it, because at that time you will be given what to say and how to say it. Because the Spirit of the Father will speak through you. Now those words of God's Spirit working in us are speaking directly to us as His children today. Because each one of us is dealing with our own set of personal lines, like I mentioned in the children's message. People who question, so tell me, why do you believe in something you can't even see? The belief among many today that there is no such thing as absolute truth. Or in other words, that the truth just varies from person to person depending upon their situation and circumstances. Maybe some of your own inner questions or doubts about who or what's really controlling your life. Brokenness with people that mean the world to you. Now you or I, hopefully, will never be thrown into a den of lions. But... Satan is working mighty hard to make us question the very core and essence of our faith. So is God still at work? Are we truly loved and cared for? Is there some answer out there for the brokenness that each one of us has to face in our own walk of life each day? And that is when we cling to the promises of God that are very much at work in our lives. If you hold to my teaching, Jesus said, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And if the Son sets you free, then you are free indeed. <coughs> Through Jesus Christ, God has literally reformed or reformed us into his children who have now been set free from brokenness. Set free from those things that aren't working in our lives. The tragedy of sin in our lives. You see, that lie in Satan's mouth, it has been slammed shut by another much louder sound. The sound of a stone being removed from a tomb. And Jesus rising from the dead on Easter morning. You are forgiven and free children of God. You see, it's not of your own doing, though. God has done it for you and made you his own, and that is what a true reformation is. Just as the Lord freed Daniel from death at hands of the lions, 
He has also freed you from a slavery of somehow trying to live your own life uh, without sin, without brokenness, all to the grace, the forgiveness, and life that Jesus brings us. Let's go back to Daniel for a moment. He faced a pretty severe challenge to his faith and his life. King Darius issued a decree that over the next 30 days, everyone in his country was to pray to him, King Darius, not to any of their own gods or some other thing or person. Now, realize, for most people back in that day, this was no big deal at all. They prayed to all different kinds of things. They believed in all different kinds of gods. They were open to a bunch of other faith teachings. But uh, Daniel, he wasn't going to do that. He would never pray to a strange god, and he certainly wouldn't pray to any earthly king. So why would a king issue such a screwball decree like that? Well, there were some men who were jealous of how Daniel was moving up the ladder in the kingdom. They wanted to find a way to make sure he was dead. They knew that Daniel would never follow such a strange law as this. Daniel was not about to stop praying to God. So they had to trick the king into issuing the decree. And just as they expected, do you think Daniel was going to let back? No. He didn't just quietly tiptoe up to his room, look around, shut the door behind him, shut the curtains, hide in the back corner, and pray to God where no one would see or hear him. In fact, he opened his window and visibly prayed towards Jerusalem three times a day. He gave thanks to God just as he had done before. Now, think for a moment. What if our government were to pass a law that said you could not worship together as we're all doing this morning? What would you do? Would you find a place where perhaps the law couldn't find you? Not that there wouldn't be places like that in North Idaho. <laughs> would you find a secret place to worship? I hope not. Like Daniel, I pray that we as an extended family, we call a congregation, would continue to come together to worship as well. Even if there were soldiers out front waiting with automatic weapons, with a paddy wagon, just to haul us all off together, and if you think that doesn't happen, think of modern day Sudan, other countries overseas that are torn apart with faith-based warfare. This place would still be open. The doors would be open. You would hear the wonderful sounds of a mighty fortress is our God in Christ alone and other songs as we sing together. You see, these evil men thought they had Daniel stuck between a rock and a hard place. And after they watched him pray, they're going, yes, Daniel's going to that lion's den. So they went to King Darius and said, uh, Darius, did you not publish a decree that anyone who prayed to any person or God other than you over the next 30 days must go to the lion's den? The king kind of wept because he knew what was happening. He had to keep his word, even though he loved Daniel, and he wanted Daniel to be number two in command. But he also knew these laws could not be repealed. Now to this day, in a world that changes rapidly, we don't know when our situation in life is going to change. And we might be threatened because of what we believe. Think for a moment of a man named Martin Luther and the courage that he had when facing his own lines. Luther posted his 95 theses, or statements of faith, on the church door in the city of Wittenberg, Germany, 500 years ago, that clearly proclaim what he believed in God's word. Everybody would see that when they came to worship on All Saints Day. And he knew exactly what the church in his day did to anyone who dared lift a finger against her. You would get started by uh, losing everything of earthly value. You'd probably be on the run for your life, and most of those folks ended up burned at the stake. But like Daniel, Martin Luther was not about to cave in to any threats, nor should we. 
The point of the Reformation of that day and that continues on to this day is that we're not alone as we live out the life of faith God calls us to. You and I have a God of grace, a God of mercy, who walks with us in every step of our journey. So, okay, will the Lord really be there when the tough times come and we're facing our own set of lines? Well, look at how the Lord delivered Daniel. The king reluctantly gave the order to throw Daniel in the lion's den. But even as Daniel is thrown in, he says to him, Daniel, may your God, whom you worship continually, rescue you. You see, the king respected Daniel because Daniel was rock solid, consistent in his worship of God. He would not compromise his faith. Bump him, poke him, turn his life upside down. He was not about to change. He always came out the same. Daniel kept his faith in the one true God without compromise. And that poor king tossed and turned all night. He didn't get a wink of sleep. At the crack of dawn, he ran to the lion's den. The stone was rolled back, and he cried out, Daniel, servant of the living God, has the God whom you served been able to rescue you from those lions? Daniel immediately responded, My God sent his angel and shut the mouths of those lions. Now, could you imagine those lions pacing around, pawing the ground, drooling, food is right in front of them, but they were not so much as able to lift a paw and take a swat at Daniel. Talk about an amazing intervention of God. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, not a single scratch was found on him because he trusted in God. Daniel trusted in God. To me, that's an even greater miracle than God shutting the mouths of those lions. And even when the lions seem to be lining up to attack us in our daily walk of life and faith and look to tear us apart, we look to Jesus. We look to his love for peace and for hope. Even when it appears that maybe Satan is winning the battle for our souls and our lives and that Boy, there's just nothing that can fix the mess I'm in right now. God steps in with his amazing grace to fix what looks utterly unfixable. Do you know what that word grace stands for? I've used this before. God's riches at Christ's expense. God was willing to give up his own son, Jesus, to the lions who hung him on a cross. But he did that so that you and I would be forgiven, redeemed, deeply loved children of God. He did that so that you and I can face the stuff of this life that drives us bananas, the things that get in the way, that frazzle us, that make us wonder, what's the future hold? And that can even make us wonder, why did you put me on this earth, Lord? We too, can trust in the God who provides everything we need and more. You see, God has not removed the life-bringing shower of his word from us. God wanted you here today so that you could share in this good news of life and love in his word. Because every blemish, every failure, every dysfunction, every hurt in life has been nailed to a cross and it has been left there. Jesus died for them. You're a forgiven child of God. You're precious. You're loved. You're beautiful in God's eyes. He will keep you in his care and deliver you from this lion's den of a fractured world to be with him for all of eternity. God's word does not change. It doesn't need to change. We can build our lives on it. And we can leave this world with it. You see, that truth of God's word works and reforms your life each day. It never returns to us empty. Read it. Savor it. Learn it together, just as we've been doing over the past 18 weeks as we've walked through the Old Testament and the story. Share it with your friends and family. It's too good to keep to yourself. 
Let it build and lift you in every moment of life. It's stronger than any lion Satan may have come pounce at you every day that puts fear or uncertainty into your walk of faith. Jesus Christ has overcome the lions for you because he is the way, the truth, and the life. May we, like Daniel, be bold and courageous as God reforms our lives to conform to his. God, give us strength as we look to a cross, to an empty tomb, and the mighty fortress of heaven that awaits us. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time